Praise God. Father, as you release your word this morning, let it penetrate every part of our being because your word is alive. And it won't return void. In Jesus' name. Matthew 24. Hallelujah. In verse 3. It says, now, as he, Jesus, sat at, on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age of grace? The end of the age of grace. Now, I gotta, you got to understand what grace first means, because grace is not God's unmerited favor. This is false doctrine. Grace is the plan of God to escape. Grace is God's plan for me and you to escape the deceptions of the enemy and the wrath of God. Because if you can't escape the enemy's deceptions, you will get caught in the wrath of God. Has everybody got it? You earn God's favor. Amen? People earn God's favor. Grace is not God's unmerited favor. It's his unmerited love. His love towards me and you is unmerited. It's overwhelming. You can't even, we can't even measure his love. So they wanted to know when the end of this age would be where you can no longer escape. Does everybody get this? Because <laughs> there will be a period of time when you can no longer escape. If you are left behind and you don't catch the rapture, the bus out of here, you will be left behind and have to go through tribulation. Because the way of escape is prior to that. It doesn't say that you can't get saved during tribulation. Because you can. But if you miss the final escape, which is the rapture, that is the last escape possible for mankind before they go through hell to get to heaven. Has everybody got that? Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. Dece de Satan's greatest weapon, again, is deception. It says that he deceives the whole world, and it's still under his rule and deception. For many will come in my name saying, I am a Christian, or I am the Christ, and will deceive many. In other words, there'll be many religions establishing, many belief systems. He said, you will hear wars and rumors of war. Well, we hear that constantly. Now, we have even have the greatest threat right now in the arena of North Korea. He said, see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. That means ethnic group. And we are seeing that now. There's tremendous bigotry. There's tremendous areas of organizations that are establishing. You got the KKK, the Black Panthers, the Black Lives Matter, uh, white premises groups, all of these other things. You got segregation, all of these things. Instead of promoting unity, they're actually promoting division. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And, these, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. He said, all these things are the beginning of sorrows, which we have already entered. We are getting ready to exit all of this. So he said, again, I want to re, uh, recap on this. He said, take heed of deception. Many religions, belief systems, wars, nations, ethnic groups, kingdoms. There will be the battle between the right and the left. Light and darkness. There will be much famines. That famines is associated with lack. There will be much lack and drought. You see many floods that are happening. There's many places that are burning right now, causing much Lack in places. There'll be much sickness. There's multiple earthquakes. You don't hear about all of them, but there's tremendous earthquakes causing tsunamis and all kinds of things. And again, these are the beginning of sorrows. 
We're seeing a tremendous battle between man itself, mankind. Right now the earth is groaning, groaning with pains. Many of these things, he said, you know, don't worry, don't fear. But the problem is, is it's bringing much fear to many people. Those who really don't know the Lord fall into fear. Many fear death. And the reason why they fear death is because they're not sure where they're going. But for me and you, death is an escape. <laughs> it's a way out. Because we know where we're going. If you truly know where you're going, you're good. If you don't know where you're going, you better get right with God. So we see fear is going to be one of the major factors in the end times. And the reason why fear is going to be a major factor because it's going to cause people to do things they shouldn't do. People become anxious and worry. They'll make decisions by fear instead of making decisions by truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, In 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 6, if you'll read it with me, please. Therefore, I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God which was in you through the laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift. Bring to remembrance. Stir things. You got to stir yourself up. People fall into oppression. They fall into all kinds of arenas because they don't stir themselves up. You are to stir yourself up. You can stir yourself up by decreeing the word. You stir yourself up by praying in tongues. You stir yourself up by worshiping. You stir yourself up by praying with someone else. You stir yourself up. Why? Verse 7. For God has not given us a what? A spirit of fear, but power... And of love and of a what? Sound mind. Now, that's what I want to talk about today. A sound mind. There's something vitally important about a sound mind. Because one of the things that the enemy is trying to do is create an unstable mind. If he can keep you in an unstable state of being, you will not have a solid mind. Your mind is associated with your thoughts. Solid. God wants me and you to be solid. He wants us to be like-minded with the mind of Christ. A sound mind. Here's a definition of a sound mind. Very simple. It is the ability to discern your own thoughts. If you cannot discern your own thoughts, you have, do not have a sound mind. That means you monitor everything. You must have the ability to discern your own thoughts. That is called a sound mind. It'd be nice if we were born with one of those, but we're not. We're born with a carnal mind. <laughs> a sound mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, a sound mind has the ability to discern its own thoughts. In other words, who told me that and where did you come from? And that is not a one-time event that is continuous. That is a life event to maintain a sound mind. Now you've got to remember the enemy comes to sway people in any way he can. If he can get you from a sound mind to an unstable mind, he has succeeded. Or if he can prevent you from establishing or entering or maintaining a sound mind, he has succeeded. Remember, the word talks about that the mind has been blinded by the enemy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9. Let's speak it. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 
Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God and also trust are well known in your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in the appearance and not in heart. In other words, there are going to be many people that say they know God. I mean, you got these white supremacist groups and KKK and organizations that say they know God. But they sure don't have the thoughts of God. Amen? There's no way. So in this, we see that an unstable mind is a seared conscience. It's a seared conscience. And the conscience is what you and I were born with. It was the way God would speak to you to tell you what was good and what is evil. To tell you. Because we can't understand righteousness until you are born again of the Spirit. So the only thing that you can understand until you are born again is what is good and evil. So God left me and you a conscience so that he can speak to me and you in some way, what, whatever way. Don't do that. In fact, he left the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament so to assist the conscience in conviction to tell them things that they weren't doing that was pleasing to God. So, know in your conscience, he said, so that we may be known. Many people, again, an unstable mind is a seared conscience. In other words, it has been seared, cut off, rejecting. But now that you and I are born in the Spirit, we should be open to all these things. We should be looking for conviction. We should be looking for counsel, correction, and direction. We no longer discern what is good and evil. We discern what is righteous. Good and evil is not good enough. You and I want to discern what is righteous. Amen? We no longer live for ourselves, but for him. What? Being of sound mind. You can't live for him without a sound mind. Is everybody okay? Okay. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 12, or verse 13, I'm sorry. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That's powerful. No longer living for yourself. If you are living for yourself, you are not of sound mind. Amen? In James chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. In verse 2. Let's do it. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various challenges. Amen. You may call them trials, but God calls them challenges. The purpose of the challenge is for you to grow. You reject the challenge, no grow. Amen. You'll stay the same. The enemy can use you as a welcome mat to his kingdom. Counted all joy, not miserable, not oppressed, not fearful, joy. When the trials come, when the challenges come, why? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which we call endurance. You are going to need endurance to grow. That's where many people run instead of grow. If any of you lacks wisdom, so here is the key. He says, man, you're going to need some wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally or freely without reproach, and it will be given to him. First, you've got to ask for it. But you've got to ask with a sincere heart. I need your wisdom, Lord. Why? Because wisdom allows me to see things all the way through. Tells me what to do. Understanding tells me how to do it. But we will need wisdom during this time. What does he say? Verse 6. But let him ask in what? Faith and confidence in the Lord. With no doubting. 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is double-minded and what? Unstable in all his ways. All his ways. All his ways. He is unstable in all various trials, various challenges to grow. Lacks wisdom to see things through because of unstable. Why? Because they cannot discern their own, th their own thoughts. This is unstability. If you cannot discern your own thoughts, you are in a state of double-mindedness and unsta unstable. Now, here are some things about an unstable mind. Are you ready? An unstable mind attach is attachments to the world first, the world, self, and past. They're always uh, connected to the world, the things of the world, themselves, and their past. That's an unstable mind. The second thing is they're easily intimidated, provoked, and offended. That is an unstable mind. Easily intimidated, provoked, and offended. The third thing of an unstable mind. It has a short-term focus, no detail. No detail. The mind seems to be always cluttered because it's unstable. It's always cluttered. Verse 4, or verse 4, the fourth thing. It reacts and justifies with false response excuses. I'm going to say that again. It reacts. They react. In other words, they, they react. Instead of respond, they react and justify. With what? With false responses and excuses. In other words, it's a false response. It's not a true response because it's a carnal response. It's not really a godly response. So they, there's, they react and justify with false responses and excuses. The fifth thing of an unstable mind depends on others more than God. Depends on others more than God. In other words, they want somebody else to do it for them. The sixth thing is they compromise, they're complacent, they complain, and they're lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically and spiritually. Instead of going to the throne, they go to the phone. Or they blame. They are, the, the, the unstable mind is a constant blamer. Will never take responsibility. Com compromise, complacent, complaining, lazy. And blames. Can never take responsibility. The seventh thing. Always fights for own life. And survival. Unable to maintain a surrendered state of being. Only for a short period of time and then boom. Always fighting for their own life and survival. They cannot maintain a surrendered life for a long period of time. It's always short. The eighth reality, I guess you might want to say, of an unstable mind is there is no fear or reverence to God. God is not first. Disrespectful to the will of God and others.
That's just a small part. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh of the world, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded or be earthly minded or have an unstable mind is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh, or what we call an unstable mind, cannot please God. It's impossible. A carnal mind is unstable mind. Living by, uh, living by the law of, God, of good and evil. It's living by the law of good and evil. That's the only way the carnal mind can look at things. It's an unstable mind. It cannot look at things of righteousness or unrighteous, it looks at things of good and evil. So it uses good for its life and also uses evil. Because to them, an unstable mind, they don't believe that they're partaking of evil, even though the fruits of it are there because of great deception. So the carnal mind is an un, un, unstable mind, living by the law of good and evil, forsaking righteousness, and allowing worldly influencing it. They are not rejecting it or resisting it. The only thing that they continue to resist is godly influence. That is called the carnal mind. The spiritual mind is a sound mind. It's a heavenly bound. It rejects worldly influence. It discerns between the good and evil and the righteous. It departs from evil. It trusts. And leans on the Lord. It loves his presence. It feeds on his faithfulness and his word. It repents quickly because it doesn't want any interference between him and the creator. It monitors its surrounding and environmental areas. Always exposing evil influence so it doesn't partake in it. It, has a, it carries a fear of the Lord, reverence, honor, and respect. And rejects the ungodly. Its details are carried by divine order. There is an area where priorities are always in place. That is a sound mind. And an, an unstable mind, priorities are scattered. There are no priorities at all. It's me, myself, and I. Everybody okay? I ain't repeating all that. <laughs> you can watch it on YouTube. Philippians 4. What? Repent. Philippians 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Good. Philippians 4.4. 4. What does it say? Rejoice. Let me tell you, you're going to run into a lot of unstable minds. Hoo-wee. We've had a huge unstable mind run the, this country for the last eight years. Total unstable, man. Whoa. Nothing but a Luciferian agenda. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always, not when you feel like it. Always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. An unstable mind. You, you can always discern that the Lord is at hand. <laughs> the only thing that's at hand is the God's hand trying to slap that person saying, wake up. Verse 6, be what? Anxious. Anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. 
Again, a sound mind rejects the push of the enemy. It rejects it. It re rejects the push of the enemy, which is called anxiousness. It rejects oppression. It doesn't allow it to take place. A sound mind will not allow oppression to come. It rejects oppression. It rejects anxiety. Knowing the need to maintain the connection with the Father all the time. Of course, that's through the Holy Spirit in prayer and supplication. But an unstable mind rejects the power of prayer and willingness to change. Again, it creates a lack, a lack in an individual's life. They're always in lack. They're always out of order. There's no divine order. They live a life of lack, torment, miser miserable, using blame. And they oppose responsibility. Lacking endurance. That is an unstable mind. They're always in need. Philippians 3. Is he ready yet? Okay. Philippians 3, verse 2. Beware of what? Dogs. The dog in the Bible means a demonized individual. So it's not a four-legged or furry thing. Okay? It means a demonized individual. Beware of dogs. Because of evil what? Workers. Well, you know you ain't talking about animals then. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no what? Confidence in the flesh or in the carnal mind. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law of blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. So he thought he was doing the right thing. This was Saul who became Paul. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge. In other words, he's talking about for the mind of Christ. I count all things lost for the mind of Christ. That I may have a stable mind. For the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means may I attain to the resurrection from the dead. Sound mind. Sound mind. So he counted all things as loss and have no confidence in the carnal mind or the flesh. Uh, but a place where we are beyond trusting in ourselves. We're no longer trusting in ourselves. We're beyond that. Amen? Amen. Knowing all things will work to the good and righteousness of God if we obey, cooperate, and need his word. So we can exchange out doubt. Amen? So we can change, exchange out doubt with trust. Maintaining a sound mind. In other words, a sound mind is always looking to maintain the connection to the creator, your mission, and eternal future. It's always present to you. It's always present. You're always looking and thinking, you know, people used to wear those bands. What would Jesus do? Is Jesus going to respond this way or react according to the way I am? Am I actually, in other words, you're your own fruit inspector. You're doing self-examination all the time. A sound mind. Remember, a sound mind is monitoring all your thoughts. It's discerning what is good, evil, and righteous. It's discerning the fruits. It's discerning character. It's always present. It never stops. 
But if you don't fuel it and you don't feed it, it will begin to diminish and the carnal mind will begin to take over again because that's where that fight is at, constant. In 1 Peter chapter 1. So one of the things that the sound mind fights for is the presence of God, the will of God, and His purpose. First Pete chapter one. Hallelujah. A sound mind is always hungry and thirsty for more of God. It's not hungry and thirsty for the world or materialism or anything. It's hungry and thirsty for the presence of God. Because the sound mind is always homebound. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. First you've got to get there, right? who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, even if need be, you have been grieved by various challenges, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious, your trust, your faith, your connection to the Lord, than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him yet, believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This genuineness of your relationship with him. Learning to agree with his thoughts. How do you do that? Through his word. Amen? Remember, the enemy is an interrupter. He interrupts people, and he does it by trying to get a seared conscience in a person. He it starts at childhood. That's why there's so many interruptions. When you think about it, in the area of unstable minds, the enemy likes to do rape. He likes to molest. He likes to cause all these things in a child. Listen, homosexual, lesbians, and transgenders are unstable-minded. They're un it's unstable. I mean, the suicide rate in that arena is tremendous. It's one of the highest suicide rates there is because of unstable, instability. And that's nothing but demonic influence. People think they were born that way. No, they weren't. Nobody is born that way. That's nothing but a spirit that enters. Or it's entered through a molestation or a rape or something that happens to someone. What does it try to do? It interrupts and brings a seared conscience. Where that person walks in in bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred. It leads further. It can get into bigotry. So somebody hurt you or offended you. So what? Give it to God, walk away, bless them, and let God deal with it. Amen. Not you. Quit trying to fix your own life. Every time we try to, we blow it. That's why the Lord says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Amen? Amen. So we are in a time right now and in this season is tremendous where there's much interruption of the enemy, searing conscience, bringing people bitterness, having mankind destroy one another. Why? Because it's the beginning of sorrows, but it's actually coming to an end. The only thing we're waiting on is a seven-year treaty to be signed, and you know it's around the corner, man. Once that happens, either we're going soon or we got three and a half years left to rescue as many souls as possible. Amen? Is everybody okay? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Then one more scripture.
You know where your heart is, your mouth is too. What comes out of your mouth exposes you. You're either contaminated or you're clean. You're either pure or you're unclean, unpure. You're either of a sound mind or you're unstable. Doubt promotes instability. Fear promotes instability. Not recognizing your influences. Ephesians 6 and verse 12. Is everybody there? For we do not what? Oh, I'm going to start at verse 10. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and not in yourself. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, in other words, the, the seen realm, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, your fight is not a seen fight. It's an unseen fight. And where is the battle? Your thoughts. That's why he says, cast down all thoughts and imaginations that will come against the knowledge of him. For our, our weapons are not physical, but they are mightying and tearing down strongholds. A stronghold is nothing but a memory lie. And you got to remember, you're dealing with the father of lies. He's called Satan, Lucifer. He's been deceiving and lying, and it's still going on. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That means you must eat his word and, eat, and drink his presence all the time. You must constantly monitor your thoughts. I can't tell you how many people I've come across that struggle. And the one thing I'll say to them, have you decreed word of God today? Have you decreed scriptures? Well, they want to say yes and lie. But I believe the presence of God grabs hold of it and says, tell the truth, homie. No, I haven't really, man, I haven't really done that. Well, then you're not eating. You're eating from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil instead of the tree of righteousness, which brings life. That means your mind is unstable and it is carnal. It's not solid and it's not sound. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter three and verse one. Glory. Is everybody there? But know this that in the last days perilous times will come. Here it is. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self control, brutal despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of religiosity and godliness, but denying God's power. And from such people turn away. These are people that are unstable minds. They are not sound mind. For this sort are those who creep into households and ministries and businesses and make captives of gullible men and women, because these are individuals that are carrying demons, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. They're always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they can never get free because there isn't a true willing desire. There is no endurance. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that frees them or can't put it into practice because they're lazy. They compromise. They're complacent. They're grumblers, complainers, and blamers because of an unstable mind. Now, as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds means unstable. Disapproved concerning the faith. No trust. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you carefully follow my doctrine, manner of life and purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of all of them, the Lord delivered me. 
See, one of the things is a sound mind, no matter what you're going through, you know all things are going to work to the good. You know, somehow, some way, God's going to make a way of escape. You know that he's coming to do something. You know something's going to happen because he's with you and not against you. You know it. So you don't move. You don't make sudden decisions that you're not supposed to. You wait. You don't react, you respond. Trust you, Lord. No, you don't go by how you feel or even sometimes what you think because you're monitoring those thoughts that are now speaking to you. It seems like every voice from hell comes up when tribulation or trials or challenges come. And that's when you've got to overcome those voices with the voice of God that's in you. You overcome the voices with the voice of God in the name of Jesus. Or you just keep limitations, diminish, always lacking, never advancing. Verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution or challenges. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Why? Because of unstable minds, carnal minds that the enemy is using. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which is able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now that is powerful. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for, correct, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. In other words, you must eat the word. Eat the word. They're in the prayer booklet that we have because I think it's vital important. Man, there's so many prayers in here. But one of the prayers in here is called daily confessions. So many times we go to other areas and whatever, but I'm telling you, when you're struggling, pull out the confession. So we're going to make confession out of this today. I know you all don't have them with you, so just repeat after me. Are you ready? Because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become, and what a man thinks is so he is. Amen. Amen. Everyone, are you ready? I am a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have been made new for me. I am no longer in bondage to any kind of thing because I belong to Christ Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my spirit, my soul, and my body. My body is anointed to be healed. My soul is to be anointed to be obedient. My spirit is anointed to be strong. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I am the body of Christ. I am redeemed from the curse because Jesus carried my sicknesses and diseases in his body on the cross. And by his stripes, I am healed. I forbid, I forbid, I forbid any sickness or disease to operate in my body. Every organ and every tissue of my body must function and the perfection which God created to function. I honor God and bring glory to him in my body. I have the mind of Christ and hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. Woohoo! The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. I do not have a fret or an anxiety about anything, nor do I have a care. I am a believer and not a doubter. I hold fast to my confession of faith. I decide to walk by faith, practice faith. My faith comes by hearing and eating the word of God. <laughs> Jesus is the author and developer of my faith. I fear, not, I fear not, 
For God is not, has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Ooh. God is on my side. I am delivered. I am delivered. I am delivered from this present evil world. I am seated. I am seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I reside in the kingdom of God's dear son. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I let the word, I let the word dwell in me richly. He who began a good work in me will continue to the day of Christ. I will submit to God. I will submit to God. I will resist the devil and he's going to flee. I'm going to tread upon the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and I'm going to take my shield of faith and quenches every fiery dart because I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. It is written, it is spoken, and it is decreed in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.